Hey, my name is Luke Schellenberger. I'm an ENT and sleep doctor. We've talked some about sleep apnea. This is a home sleep study machine. And so um, I've recently done a, a sleep study myself, even though I don't think I have sleep apnea. But when patients believe that they do, or they're told that they're snoring or they're sleepy during the day, we oftentimes will get them a home sleep study done to find out if they have sleep apnea. And so patients a lot of times ask, what does it even do? Well, we'll talk about it. So um, basically patients put this on at night and sleep with it. Um, my experience in uh, having this on overnight is that it's slightly annoying. I'd probably say it's a, on a graded, you know, A, B, C, D, or A, B, C, D, F, you know, how poor was my sleep? I'd probably say it's a B. It's not terrible. I mean, it's not great, um, but I probably slept, I don't know, five or six hours with it on. Um, but then again, I'm safe. So, you know, this thing's now on. What actually does it measure? Well, first off, it has to measure your oxygen level in your blood. And so this thing has a little sensor in it that measures the oxygen level. And so when patients have a sleep apnea, uh, an apnea episode, um, a lot of times the oxygen level will decrease. Um, part of when we're measuring sleep apnea, a sleep apnea index, we're looking at a, uh, a level called the apnea hypopnea index, AHI. And most um, sleep doctors will use that score to be able to translate to patients exactly how bad things are. Okay, so an apnea hypopnea index, zero to five is normal. So it's kind of crazy. But basically you can have reduction in your airflow at night because our brain craves sleep so much that it will allow us to have little episodes of suffocation where we actually will obstruct up to five times an hour. That's kind of crazy. But again, it's just kind of part of our normal sleep, um, but between five to 15 AHI is mild, 15 to 30 is moderate and over 30 is severe. I have seen patients with over an AHI index of over 120. That means every 30 seconds they are obstructing, waking up and obstructing. 30 seconds later, waking up, obstructing. Now they're not knowing that they're waking up. Their brain doesn't allow them to fully be aware of, of those of those arousals and how, and how, but can imagine how how horrible it would be if someone held a pillow over your face until you kind of shook a little bit over like every single minute of your sleep, you wouldn't sleep at all. So, so oxygen level, that's number one. Pulse rate has a measure of, of what your heart rate is. Can you imagine if somebody held a pillow over your head for 10 or 15 seconds at night? your heart rate probably go up because your brain sends chemicals to say, hey, I need more oxygen going to my blood. So your, your pulse rate's gonna go. Again, that's not healthy over and over and over and over again. Um, this also tells whether you're asleep or not. You can imagine if somebody's in bed at night and you know breathing like a champ all night long, if the machine couldn't tell you if you're asleep, it wouldn't matter if you had sleep apnea or not, it wouldn't be an accurate study. And so there's different levels of sleep too where patients can have shallow sleep, kind of these, um, you're not quite asleep, deeper sleep, or a sleep uh, called REM, or rapid eye movement sleep. And so that's a completely different um, type of level of our sleep. And this has to be able to know that because there's different types of sleep that are kind of different things in our body happen at different times based on our sleeping. It has actually a little uh, microphone to, to tell if you're snoring or not. Obviously, if somebody um, is snoring, that's a lot of times what they want to find out how bad it is. And snoring sometimes can go along, although it's not a, a measurement of uh, distress. It doesn't fact figure into that apnea hypopnea index. It deal, still does kind of give us as clinicians saying, oh, this patient is a severe snore, extremely loud snore. And so that can give us an idea about, hey, what are we going to do about that? It also importantly measures airflow. So when we're breathing, this thing is measuring how much airflow there is. And that's extremely important for sleep apnea because if someone's oxygen level is dropping um, and there is good airflow, 
That's not a sleep issue. That's not, I mean, that's not a sleep apnea issue. That's a pulmonary problem or a heart problem where your oxygen level may be dropping, but you're actually continuing to breathe. That's a big deal. But airflow, if we stopped airflow and our oxygen level is dropping, that tells us something. If our airflow uh, is, is stopped um, and our body is continuing to move, that's most likely an obstructive pattern where it's a central pattern Basically, our brain is stopping, is told us to stop breathing, and that's called a central sleep apnea. I've talked a little bit more about that before, but there'd be reduction in airflow, reduction in, in your oxygen level. But this also, the last one of the things this also measures is how much movement. And it has such fine sensors that it can tell if our body is actually moving in a rhythmic pattern uh, based on, on uh, on lung movement. So it's kind of a pretty fancy sensor um, that is a whole lot easier to tolerate than going and sleeping in a sleep lab where you not only would have an airflow monitor, but you would have uh, actually straps over your chest because that measures the movement. You would have sensors around your eyes to measure eye movement and you'd have what's called an EEG. So all these monitors around your head to tell you if uh, your your uh, the level of sleep you're in. So obviously, an in lab sleep study requires uh, is for certain patients who have very complex sleep issues. Whereas this is really trying to find out: do you have sleep apnea or you don't? And obviously, from my standpoint, I really don't treat those more complex sleep issues. And the fact is, the vast majority of patients who have sleep problems, it's a, a sleep apnea issue or it's not, if it is, this is something I manage all the time. If it's not, it's something that typically a sleep neurologist or a pulmonologist that deal with sleep issues would manage. And so I talked to a little bit more about exactly what an, a uh, home sleep study measures, how it works, um, and uh, hopefully give you a good idea of exactly kind of what you're gonna be expecting um, if you were to have a home sleep study, or to give you an idea of when you might need one, all right?